Right. We're gonna uh, get going. Do we have the um, our Zoom have. up? Up. No, we're going. It's, it's going. Are we live? There's a bunch of people. Hello, there. online, all our Zoom we fans all over we'll the world. Seats. Welcome. We are starting the team meeting, and it's great to see everybody. Good morning. This is awesome. Good morning. Um, well, we got a great lineup for you today, so we're gonna dive right into it. First of all, uh, in fact, before I uh, go through all the different topics and stuff, we're gonna cover. What are you guys seeing out there? Is the market slowing down? Is it heating up? Is it as crazy as ever? I want to hear from you guys. Full audio. Raise hands who? What? Try me. Yes. So I was showing a house in the city that was listed at 440. Yep. And uh, the, the, my people didn't want to go for it at 440. Right. So a couple of days ago, I called the listing. I do confirm to help them out. I called the listing agent. I'm like, hey, are you at freedom of telling me what to accept it? And she said, not right now, because not, we, we are not closed yet. Right. So I'm like, well, was it more than 450? And she said, yes, and it was cash. So they went over, it was, your client didn't want to pay 440, it went over 450 cash. Yeah, and they had four offers, and one of them was a contingent offer, but they said, we will give you 2,000 more than the highest offer. Wow, that's, that's a creative so idea. 2,000 more than the highest team offer, team good. Krista, you were gonna raise your hand? Yeah, so last year, I had 25 listings, 17 of those sold in multiple offers, and they were, uh, my one craziest one, they were all crazy, way over asking, no appraisal contingency. I uh, got one buyer or one seller six months free rent back, another one two months, one month, like whatever they wanted. And the craziest one went for 50,000 over with no inspection contingency, no appraisal contingency, mm -hmm. uh, two months free rent back, and sell, uh, contingent on the seller finding replacement property. Wow, so check this out. Some of you, we're gonna do some more of you. Some of you think this is crazy, to write an offer with no inspection contingency and no appraisal contingency, right? This has been done for 15 years in the San Francisco, San Jose area. When they write offers, they are non-contingent out the gate. Like if you actually put a contingency yeah. in your offer, they would laugh at you. Oh, oh, you want five days for your loan and appraisal? Next. I mean, you would not even yeah. be considered. Now, if you're watching this, and we get people that watch this all over, they have 21 days for a loan. 17 for inspection, 17 for appraisal. You guys, that's uh, that's like listening to Johnny Cash on an eight track cassette tape. And if you want it, you better be aggressive, you will lose a lose. So, uh, I got an offer to Danielle, one of our new agents, and this home appraised at 340. It got 22 offers in one day. That means there were 21 families that were disappointed. It means there were 21 listing agents that were disappointed. It means there were 21 loan officers that were disappointed. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's um, you know 63 people bummed out, and only one winning buyer, one winning agent, and one this. And so I'm gonna cover what I saw, because I haven't reviewed that many offers. She was new and just was overwhelmed by the stack of offers. Hey, Lucy. So basically, what happened was, I sat down and I have a, I've actually, you know, when my rep share got good, you know, is that good English? Got good, <laughs> got milk, got rep share. Um, I said I'm good and I have not presented offers in years. And I, I was a little intimidated. I mean, the most, I've had seven, eight, 22. Uh -huh, so I'm going through the offers and go, this is garbage, here's why. And I'd circle it with the yellow highlighter. Right. This is garbage, here's why. This is garbage, here's why. Out of the 22, I found, um, 11 that were garbage yeah. and, I, I just, and I really put a yellow sticky and I circle all the things in like and I'll tell you what it is. A savvy listing is going to go next, 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 yeah. next, next. Yeah. I mean, they never even a chance. They went here and watch them until the sellers yeah. they're garbage. I'm going to scan through some of them and I'm going to go. And then I found five offers that were okay. Mm -hmm. Pretty well yeah. written. Yeah. And, and I real quickly went, here's why they're okay. They're not VA. They're not Cal FHA. They're not FHA. These are all conventional. They have quicker things. They're over the asking. These are okay. But I go, really, I spent maybe a minute on that. But And I could go through the details of this, but I have six great offers. Six mm -hmm. offers that'll rock your world. What do you say we just focus on the six? So I'm like, yes, but it's in a divorce situation. Wife is living 200 miles away. Husband here, I did it all over the phone, like blind. No Zoom, no nothing. And then I got to the six. And I ranked them, number six, number five, number four, number three, number two, number one. It's like showing property. Right. Here's my favorite house, it will be last. Right. Here's my second favorite house, it will be second to last. And then I uh, I actually, when I show a property, and I'm off topic a little bit, 
I like to show a horrible million dollar house. Because it's I call it an attitude adjustment. It's like, oh my gosh, they want this? They're crazy. Then I go to one that's okay, I'm like, oh, this is way better. They're relieved. And then go something's better, better. And all of a sudden when I get to my favorite at the end, they're like, we want to make an offer. There's this momentum and this excitement. I call it the momentum, the crescendo. Same thing when presenting the offers to the sellers. I go, here's number six real quick. Here's, here's why it's a great offer, but it's the, it's the six. And I spent a minute on it. Boom, boom, boom. And then I hit, here's number five. Here's number four. Here's number three. Number two. I'm going to go through these quickly. But number one beats the socks off all of them by a mile. So we can spend two hours going through every nuance of these offers. You got to learn to talk to people like that. Yeah. I just slobbered. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> you got to learn to talk. Sorry. It's a splash zone at SeaWorld. You're lucky I was saying that one. He's an ex car racer. He can handle a little slobber. I get excited, juice flies. Now, here's the deal. I said to him, I could spend two hours going through every nuance of all these officers or just get you the best one. And I'm just giving you an overview of all of them and, and going to why I think this is the best. Like, yes, please. That they don't want to spend two hours either. Mm -hmm. Same thing, you're about to get the listing contract. Hey, we could take three minutes and knock it out right now, and there's one sign. Or you could drive 30 minutes back over to my office, spend an hour with me, and 30 minutes back home and spend two hours. You want to spend three minutes and just knock it out an hour, spend two hours later. You know, what's it going to be? And I'll talk about how to get a listing sign in a little bit. So um, I'm going to tell you what was shocking and horrific and oh my gosh it made me want to represent buyers again <laughs> so easily winnable they made every mistake in the book I'm talking not a few 22 offers honestly 21 were were they just were like I'm like nobody knows what they're doing right. like nobody even the 21 and the one that won sent us the offer they forgot to have it all signed by the buyer oh. that was the winning one <laughs> and you know when the close of escrow date is they forgot to fill it in. Oh my God. That was the best one. Oh we God. went with the buyer who oh didn't even put a close of escrow. He would call him out. Uh, when would you like to close that scrap? Oh, I didn't put that in. No, no you didn't. <laughs> uh, 15 days. Okay. Yeah. And, and I said, get it signed, resend to me. So actually, I have it signed. I don't know what happened. I must have sent you the other one. I go, by the way, the entire offer is not even initialed or signed. Like, oh my gosh, I have that. They okay, well, why don't you send us the, one the right one? one <laughs> you know? And, but their offer was so real written. She really made a mistake. And they weren't sure on the close of escrow. They, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'll tell you why it was the best one. But I was able to put it together I, probably in about 15 minutes over the phone. They chose the best offer. So rank your offers. Literally, I had yellow stickies. Number six, number five, number four, number three, number two, number one. Blah, blah, blah. And of course, number one was last. Just like showing property. The best homes are last. You don't show them the best home. They're like, they're like wow, this is pretty nice. Are you kidding me? That thing's phenomenal. But they have no grid. They have nothing to compare it to. So I like to show... Fixer upper $2 million homes. Fixer upper $200,000 condos. I like the ones that says, hey, we had a cat. You know, if your clients are sensitive to that. And pet odor, you know, maybe this isn't the home for them. I'm like, oh, that is my first home. I want the ammonia smelling house or cat. I want it to burn their eyes. And they go in and they're like 200,000, 7 million, 700,000. And then I, it just brings their expectation down. Right. Because everybody yeah. has champagne yeah. taste yeah. on a beer yeah. budget. <laughs> so what you want to do is show them horrible homes on purpose. Just one or two, okay? We, we need to have them in the right mindset. And then you show the okay ones that are pretty good. And then after you show them the horrible one, like, Oh, thank God. This is much better, and I know it's coming. I know number one and two, my faves. I saved my faves for the end. You know, same thing with presenting offers. So I kind of launched on that because I am ready to get into this topic. But Krista, thank you for sharing that. Is there anything else you want to add to what you said? No, uh, other than I'm shocked at the agents who won't call before they send an offer. They don't even confirm if I, I mean, it's just shock. Yeah. Same thing, if I get 12 offers, three are worth looking at. Yep. Yeah. Three are. Eight, don't even get the table. You these savvy list agents are going next, next, yeah. next, ooh, next, next, wow, yeah. next, next, yeah. next, ooh, mm -hmm. wow. And you got the this is a technical word, yucky pile, right? Mm -hmm. The icky pile, the ugh, like they're, they're these are new agents, they don't even know what they're doing, they've had no training. We're not even gonna deal with this. 
We're talking, uh, I gotta stop. I wanna tell you, I have all my notes here, but I wanna hear from other people before we get into some of the training. Uh, yes, Drew, what's happening in today's market? What are we seeing? So, totally on board with what Krista said. So when, with my listings, I had one in Stockton just a couple of months ago. Uh, I think we got a total of 16 offers and there was only two or three in contention because those were the two or three that called me. Right. I gave them everything that they needed, gave them what my clients were actually looking for, what would actually you know, pertain to and help my client. Everyone else just kind of you know, came in you know, throwing blinds and the three that called me, I gave them correction. Yeah. Right? They called, so you get what he said, this is beautiful, those of you watching online. Uh, I know Cindy's watching online, Darcy's talking online, a lot of the teammates are. Um, call and get directions, yes. right? Like yes. men don't do that. I know where I'm going, I'll figure it out. Then you get there four hours later, or you don't get there at all, you right. turn around and go home. So I love that, call and get directions. Like, what is it you're looking for, yes. Mr. Listing Agent? Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like Chicago title. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, boom, boom, boom. Here's what I want. And what does your seller want? Mm -hmm. Well, they want this, this, this. And, uh, and they, they want a long escrow. And then you gotta say, don't go okay 90 days. You put 90, I go okay, so you don't wanna move till June? Correct. I said, would, would, it, would you guys be opposed if we closed in 12 days but let them stay till July, right. rent free, right. rent free? Mm -hmm. yes. Oh my gosh, Brent, that is like <laughs> 2,000 a month. Yep, times four months. You're talking about 8,000 a rent. Okay, you do highest and best. Here's highest and best. Throw money over the fence. Uh -huh. Throw money over the fence. Mm -hmm. Do homes go for more than eight grand? Yeah. Try eighteen grand. Try right. eighty grand. Right. Try forty, right. fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Do you do you want to save a little money on the rent to not be in a bidding war exactly. or go 10, 20, 30, 40,000 over? Stop even collecting rent from sellers. Mm -hmm. Don't ask them to pay a dime. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think I can get it. Good. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you could. There's no other offers. But my offers, and when I come in the last minute in the 11th hour, right, the midnight hour, mm -hmm. you ask for 1800 bucks for a month, I ask for nothing. All things being equal, you the seller, would you take that they look the same, smell the same, feel the same, but one wants you to pay 1800 and then sweet, kind Brent and his client, you know, <laughs> Susan, go, you can stay for a month rent free, no security deposit, right. buyer trusts the seller, who would you pick? Right. Now the Coldwell Banker attorney's like, you gotta charge a security yeah. deposit. You're not representing your client. Go ahead, charge a security deposit. I just won. You lost. Mm -hmm. you, you're you're not gonna get a deal. Mm -hmm. um, now if they're Hell's Angels or or college students throwing a, a keg or maybe you're charging security deposit. <laughs> Most of these homes are amazing and it's you know Dale Webb and I don't think Grandma and Grandpa are throwing the keg or, and and you can find I watch it. That was just a thousand dollars. I present those to my sellers. Mm -hmm. How do we get that thousand back? Well, if you leave it, well, what? who determines the condition yeah, on the buyer? Exactly. Well, what if they don't like it? I go, well, you may have to go to court. I don't want to go to court. Forget them. You just lost the deal over a stupid $1,000 security deposit. Yeah. A, never ask for a security deposit. B, never ask for rent. Not in this market. Mm -hmm. Not in this market. Yeah. But Drew, I, did I yeah, wrap that up right? Yeah. I had one more thing, yeah. too. For then, people, yeah. when you're calling about the, the listing agents, plenty of us listing agents have plenty of listings don't be afraid to also ask what else do you have coming yeah, out bingo exactly. I have a guy that I have a 900 thousand or eight hundred and eighty five thousand dollar listing in Folsom coming up on for, or tomorrow or Saturday a guy called me about a three hundred thousand dollar property he asked me that question he has already offered my clients fifteen thousand dollars over asking price with up to three to four month rent back for free because he simply asked, do what you have anything have? else coming out? And then he asked, what would your client like? Yep. Can point, I? point well made, I'll just say this. I, I want to buy a home in a very nice area. <clears throat> and I went to one of the top <clears throat> agents in that area who knows every on market and off market and then his network with all the agents. And today at five o'clock, I'm gonna look at a 6,000 square foot home on the golf course that is like, Dreamy, 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 mm -hmm. and it's nobody knows it's available because right. it's sold, but it fell out of escrow wow. yesterday, mm -hmm. and I get to see it with no fear of other offers. Awesome. I can go low, I can negotiate. Wow. It's not on the market, but it is for me yeah. because it, so be smart, get yeah. scrappy, Chris. Well, just when what Drew said, because the few agents that do call and actually ask for direction, and I'm like just like Drew, I tell them exactly what they need to do. 
But they, you always have one or two that then try to argue with you on what you just told them to do. <laughs> yeah. I, Ooh, I okay. I'm sorry, Chris. I already know that <laughs> yeah. no matter what you offer, she there's no way I'm going to be married to you for 30 days. Yep. yep. I, I, done. So if the listing thing. agent says, yeah. we Western want you to right. accept the motor home in the side yard that's been there for 20 years and it's got cobwebs and this, you need to write that in the offer. Yes. And then they're like, well, we're not doing that. I mean, uh, you know, whatever. And, and they, they start art never. Whatever they say is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Take the directions yeah. for advice mm -hmm. and then fall through. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the, the short stack. And then are you bringing them dinner? Are you are you saying, if I get this, I'll send you to the Ritz Carlton, the Hyatt? It's okay to do that stuff. Why? You don't. Yeah. Oh, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't. I'll do it. You send people to Hyatt? Yeah. Um, the Hyatt's going to be like $395 for a night. Yeah. Woo -hoo. And a bigger deal, the Ritz Carlton is $12.95 a night. I'll send you the Ritz. The people don't go to the Ritz Carlton all the time. If I get this, Krista, you couldn't stop me from sending you and your husband to the Ritz Carlton this weekend. I mean, when it closes, I, mean, I always get a cut. <laughs> when it closes, when I get paid, uh, and they always say, they always say, what do they say when you say this? What do they typically say? You know? Well, actually, that I haven't even offered that yet, so I know. I don't know what they say. <laughs> so I'll tell you what they say. Ready? Ready? You take Are you ready? Here's what they say. You ready? Oh. That's not necessary. <laughs> I, go, I know it's not necessary, but you yeah. can't stop me from doing this. I, I take it to the bank, it's going yeah. to happen. I love it. You can't and, stop and then me. Pick up the phone. Oh my gosh! I won't break <laughs> up to get this offer. I've always wanted another Ritz Carlton in Appleton Bay. It's like London, England. It's like a castle in Scotland. It is amazing. It's something people just don't do. Now, am I doing that on a $200,000 condo? No, it's Motel 6 in Vacaville, baby. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta adjust it, you know, for there. It's like, that is, what's your absolute all-time favorite restaurant in Sacramento? Oh, that would be Makuni's. I love sushi. It would be Ruth's Chris. It would be Morton's. It would be, there's a new one in downtown. Anybody know what Barry was telling me about? What's it called, Barry? The new Echo stadium? and Rig. What? Echo and Rig. Hold on, what? Echo and Rig. Echo and Rig. Rig. Yeah. They're supposed to just be incredible. By the way, that's how you grow AXP, being excited about it. I cannot wait to go to Echo and Rig. They're a famous steak place. They just came to Sacramento. Mm -hmm. You want to go to a new place for dinner? Echo and Rig, downtown. I'll be going there in April when I get back. But, so here's the deal. Where was I? If you need directions, I'll be glad to take you guys there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> After my first day. For a spot. <laughs> okay, I know where I was. For a tomahawk so, is what I so like. So if it's, if it's <laughs> If it's a two hundred fifty thousand dollar condo, three hundred fifty thousand house, you're still making six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars. That's worth the two hundred dollar Echo and Rig or yeah, Morton's or Ruth yes. Chris. So I said, look, if I get this, Lucy, I, I know, it, but but if I'm fortunate enough to get this, I'm gonna send you to dinner this weekend. Two hundred dollars on me, Echo and Rig. Oh, that's not necessary, but they remember, mm -hmm. and I cannot tell you how many times. And the next time you present an offer. They got seven offers. Oh yeah, that's Krista. That's Lucy. That's Megan. Mm -hmm. That's Susan. They sent me to Echo to Rig. God, we had a good time. And I don't even know these other agents. I wonder if she's gonna send me to Echo to Rig. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. you laugh, James. Do you own a home on a golf course? I do. Did I detail the secretary's car with a toothbrush? <laughs> now, did I detail? No, the you had somebody else. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> it was like 170 bucks. Just 170 dollars. I mean, the funny part of that story is, I called back a year later on another one of their properties, and I'm like, "Is Sheila there?" Because now I get a buddy. I detailed her car. He lives in a house. How much equity do you have in that thing now? Oh man, there's probably 400,000. Yeah. You know. I want my money back. <laughs> the funny thing is, they represent themselves. I wasn't even a part of the transaction. But I know how to go negotiate. I'm scrappy. I'm hand to hand combat. I mean, this is it. You've got to be competitive. Right. Do you have to be competitive in this market? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so a year later, I call the same, I get one of the secretaries, and I go, Yeah, is Sheila there? I don't even quite remember her name. And she goes, um, oh yeah, may I tell her who's calling? They say that, right? Branko. She goes, just a minute, she covers the phone, but not enough that I couldn't hear. She goes, she goes, she goes it's that guy! She goes, the guy! She goes, who? The guy who detailed your car? She goes, oh! And she goes, make sure he gets the deal. Do you think he didn't detail my car? I heard all this. Anyway, she goes, okay, she goes, and I go, yes, I will detail your car. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I put that home in the so I have $240 so 
dollars because I'm doing things for people. Well, that's against the law. No, it's not. It's not against the law to be kind and be nice. Okay? It's not. Okay. Um, now, they're not a part of the transaction. They work for people who are. And, uh, and to say thank you, well, that's a bribe. No, it's called being courteous and being grateful and saying thank you. Nothing wrong with that. Now, uh, Johnny, you want to say something? Yeah, I had a couple points. Uh, okay. to, to you about the golf course thing and how you're getting, getting in the last minute. Because yeah. it's a lot of escrow. That's how we get a lot of homes in escrow. We, put, we submit mm -hmm. our offers of backup. If there's 20 people, that client, that agent is going to want to get that home right back in escrow. Mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, everybody's scattered to the wind, and you're the last They just call you. Standing. They yeah. just call you. Are you still interested? I know you're in back. Are you guys still interested? Yeah. You've gotten two, maybe three homes in escrow yeah. doing that. Mm -hmm. awesome. Johnny, quick question on that. When you do that, do you do you have them sign the backup offer so yep. you're in at the price? I mean, is it all locked in? Yeah, it's a formal. It's a formal. Okay. Yeah. It's not just a verbal. Mm -hmm. So that way, because then the listing agent feels better about it too, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And then um, the other thing, Valerie just got home in escrow because her offer was so clean. She was not the highest and best. She was, but the guy, he's he's older. His, like, his, I think his life is something like zero, 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 one. Wow. Like that. And he's like, oh, yeah, I really want to work with you. You have the best offer. It was the cleanest. You know, and it, that's the only reason why she got tight. So if you if you want to write a clean offer, talk to Brett, talk to Krista, talk to Valerie, because that will make you stand out. And the last, yes. thing, I'll say, the last yes. thing I'll say is that when she submits the offers, we're all being told to call. We're all, you know, maybe submitting client offers. But what Valerie's doing is she's submitting her own little resume in the email yes. body yes. saying why yes. she's the best agent, why yes. she can get the deal done. Oh my God. So oh something my God. that you can, yes. and that doesn't cost that, anything. Right, that's so, so helpful. That's three, three little points. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, these are great tips, take this stuff in. Okay, so the market, we can say, is still totally yes. nuts in Sacramento, yes. California, right? Oh, and I'm here this nationwide, everywhere the market, not market. <laughs> it feels like a market. The market. <laughs> nuts, that's nuts in market. Narket, narket. Yes. I'm like, that's, I'm like, how did I go narket? Nuts in market. The market is nuts, it's a narket. Um, it's a new term, uh, it's a new term. Put it, what's that? What, what do you do your own definitions on online? What's it Her called? Right. Wikipedia? Wikipedia. Yeah. I want credit for Narcan. <laughs> I'm putting it in my next newsletter, Per <laughs> No, no. Per Barry Mathis. <laughs> All right. So what, what? how did I sort my offers? Anyone who put a $1,000 earnest money deposit, right. two or three, went in the naughty pile. Mm -hmm. That was all I had to do. I circled it. Done. They were done. Right. The second they put out a thousand, two, three thousand, A, the agent doesn't have control over the buyer. Right. You, when you know there's multiple, multiple offers, you put a thousand dollar deposit, two thousand dollar deposit, three. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I look, I circled it, I go, we're done. Mm -hmm. This agent is new or doesn't is not the leader. The buyer is the leader. Mm -hmm. You just none of us experienced agents to put up a thousand bucks. When there's multiple at two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, the the home is only three fifty. Well, three that's almost one percent. A, you should be putting up, you know, ten, fifteen, yeah. twenty thousand mm dollars. -hmm. And so the good pile, they had big earnest money deposits, and they did. So A, you want to get blown out, put up a thousand, two, three. Well, my client only has a thousand, so that told me the client has mm -hmm. no money. So maybe it's a good agent, or the client's uncoachable. And who wants to be in escrow for 30 days with a non-coachable buyer? Yeah. Buyer, and so literally, I got 10 with a thousand, two, three thousand dollars. Wow. Everybody wants it. 10 went wow. boom. So <laughs> that that was what made the naughty pile. The other things that made the naughty pile were full 21 day inspection loan contingencies. We won't know for three weeks if we really have a deal. Right. That's what that means. They can back out three weeks from yeah. now and la di da and take their earnings money to skip it off. That is not acceptable. So that tells me either the agent is incompetent or new, or they have a buyer, the lender's like, I need three weeks. Uh -huh. I need three weeks and a Hail Mary prayer to get this one through. <laughs> Make sure you put 21 days on that approval. And we have a lender in the room. Mm -hmm. um, if, if the lender's saying, I need 21 days, what does that typically mean? They're, they're very disorganized. The buyer's sketchy. They got a lot of patching to do on the file. They're not trying to get accepted right now. It's either 10 or 12 day loan approval contingency or you know, nothing beyond that, or you know it's a weak file. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, um, so that tells me either they have a new loan officer. I met a guy getting coffee here in the building. I go, what do you do? And he goes, he, he goes oh, I'm a loan officer. And, and I'm like, what did you do for that? He goes, I was working at Petco, you know, and, and he's a brand new loan officer. And I started talking about it. I could tell you didn't know a thing. How would you like him to do your loan mm -hmm. and have it die 
And when the loan dies and the deal dies, who does the seller blame? You. Yeah. Right? And so you could have a, a lender who just doesn't have confidence. Um, you could have a buyer who's a mess. And so again, it made the bad pile. 17 days for appraisal. Well, everyone's busy. Again, non-aggressive agent. We order it on the rush. We get it done. Um, so you're going to get it done in five days. Yeah, we should. What if it doesn't get done? Then we ask for an extension. I have never lost a deal because I need, look, they did it. We don't have it back. Should be another day or two. They've never canceled and gone. I just never happened. It's a possibility, but it hasn't. So be aggressive in that area or, or um, ideally, no appraisal contingency. Okay? And that, that means if it doesn't appraise, that you may not get to buy this house or you have to pay the difference, right? Mm -hmm. Ask your client, you want to pay the difference. My uh, real estate agent on another home I'm buying in Puerto Rico, um, it, it's going to appraise at 1.2 million and we, we're going to 1.4 and he's just not going to appraise past 1.2. It means you have to pay $200,000. I go, I will pay $200,000 over the appraised value. Have you asked your clients, are you willing to if it doesn't appraise? The market's saying the home is worth 350 plus all cash. One buyer says, I wouldn't pay 340. Somebody else says, I'll pay cash 355. The market determines the value, and what the banks do to protect themselves, they give appraisal because they're giving out money. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care that the market says it's worth that. If it doesn't, if it goes default, we get it back. We're gonna, we want to, we want to protect our money we're lending. And so, but really, it's all about that. So it could be some people have the money and go, I love this home so much, I will pay 30, 40, 50. If it doesn't appraise, I will pay the difference. And I tell them appraisals are picked by lottery, right? Mm -hmm. And appraisals can do whatever they want, appraisers. So they know it's worth this, it's worth that. There's no repercussions on to the next one, which is a good thing, neutral third party. It keeps the market from going off a cliff like it did in 05, 06, 07 on that big run up. Mm -hmm. So um, other things that made the, the naughty list is they asked, the home was basically vacant. Um, the guy was half lived in and they, um, we had about seven buyers ask for the refrigerator, the washer, and the dryer. A used refrigerator, a used washer, a used dryer. So that told me, A, you don't ask for personal property during a multiple off situation, right? Yeah. So it told me, A, again, their agent's not savvy, or B, if their agent was savvy, but the buyer insisted that they go for the roof, it told me that it was a non coachable buyer. So just simply asking for a you could probably get it on Craigslist or Facebook, a fridge for four or five hundred bucks. People sell them all the time. Here, take it. Three hundred dollars. So the, really, and guess what? All seven of those people, I put them in the bad, not even the okay office. They made the bad stack because they asked for a used washing machine, a used dryer, used fridge. They told me, that you just don't ask for personal property when you have dozens of offers. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So again, these are things that made the list. Um, anybody who had a 30 day escrow or longer went in the bad list. This is not even the okay. What made the okay list was uh, 21 day closes, 25 day closes, 23 day closes, 18 day closes. What made the great list were 12, 14, and 15 day closes. Mm -hmm. Speed matters. Mm -hmm. It matters. It may not matter to you, but it matters to me. And if you're writing on my offer, and I'll tell you, it doesn't hurt. How many think it hurts? They're like, and you got to tell them, look, you're running close in 12 days, and we'll let you have the 90 days you want it because they say we want a 90 days. If you don't want a 90 days, bro. I bet your seller just doesn't want to leave for 90. Correct, um, how, Peter? How would you like to get paid in 12 days? Sure. Me too. <laughs> and make sure you tell your seller they get all their proceeds. I know they, you mentioned they own it outright, and we're coming in at 480, so they're going to get 400, what, 50 thousand, whatever it's cash in 12 days if we can make a deal. So I know you have seven choices or 14. Don't counter those guys, all these people. Just you and me, buddy. Counter me. If there's something wrong with my offer, I've asked you for directions. I've gotten your advice. But if there's something they just don't like, give me a counter. Let's fix that. And let's get going. Because we're as is. By the way, not one single offer wrote in bold print on page one as is. Not a single one of the 22. Every, every, well, that's dangerous. The contract says it's as is right. in California. You read the contract. Exactly. Yeah. So get some credit for it, mm -hmm. print it, and then like a kindergartner, um, what you want to do is on page, wherever you can, find it. I write, I write this big, all caps. I use three or four lines. I want it to jump off, like literally, it's right here, and it's probably this big on an offer, as is. I presented those offers to sellers. They get giddy. 
they get excited. Because all sellers are worried about what? What are they worried about? Repair request. Repair request. I go, these guys, I'm telling you, Peter, tell your clients, we will take it as is. We will not ask them to fix a thing. But let me define what this means. We are going to do an inspection. If the foundation is bad, we're probably going to cancel. If the roof is destroyed and obliterated, or it's got 30,000 worth of termites, we're probably going to cancel. This doesn't mean we're going to buy it no matter what. We're still going to inspect. Okay? And we know that the foundation's good and the roof's good and all those things. But make sure your seller knows this does not mean that we're, we're, we're going to inspect. Okay? Well, you have no inspection contingency. I know we're not going to use it, but, but we're going to inspect. Okay? And so you go through some of these things. By the way, Barry, is it possible to make a non contingent offer in the state of California? Yes or no? Not the way the offer is written. Not the way the verbatim. There's only one way to do it that I know of. Yeah, it's impossible to make a non contingent offer. Even in San Francisco, say, well, you just told us they've been doing it for 15 years. It's impossible. Barry, as a broker, he owned an Intero franchise. When, when the buyer receives disclosures from the sellers, how many days do they have to review them? Uh, they have five days usually by the language in the contract. And you think, well, they posted it online. They posted it up there. They put the disclosures there. You still got five days. Mm -hmm. B, you're going to get something from title company called a what? Prelim. Yeah, prelim. HOA. Oh, there's the HOA. The second you get the HOA docs, how long do you have, Barry? Five Jimmy? days. Five days. That means you can cancel. We use, you don't have an inspection contingency. You don't have an appraisal. You don't have a loan. Yes, you do. By the law, the buyer may back out during that period. Is that correct? Yeah, That's and, what if, I mean. and, and remember, if you're running late on getting them your ABID, if you're running late on getting them any of those disclosures, what you've just done is created a massive liability. Um, so you need to For get your, your disclosure. seller. Yeah, if you're, if you're on the seller side. Yeah, but yeah, every yeah. disclosure you get uh, comes with a right of uh, cancellation. Yeah, now let's back up. Um, I have heard that if someone says, oh yeah, um, my son spilt oil on the garage floor uh, last summer, we mopped it up. There's a last minute disclosure. Oh yeah, we forgot we replaced the window um, over in one of the bedrooms, last minute disclosure. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna be able to cancel at the last minute and get your 10, 20 thousand dollar deposit back? Maybe, maybe not. That is up to a judge to decide. And most of them will say, um, that uh, the fact that um, they buried their canary in the background is not terms to blow up this deal. It, and it's up to a judge in small things. But here's the deal, before you ever get to the judge, if they want to sell that house to somebody else, they've got to clear the cloud on title, yeah. and they're not going to be able to clear the cloud on title while they're waiting six months to get to a judge, so they're going to just give you your deposit back. Yeah, more than likely, but never promise the buyer you will get your deposit back, because yeah. if it goes to the small claims court, it is the judge's decision. Never promise the seller you will get this earnest money deposit. If the buyer pushes it to court, and the judge is going to decide, it is the judge's decision. I've seen judges do things that were, in my opinion, wrong. I see, last week I saw two judges arrested and sent to prison. And they're human beings on TV, on you I mean, saw it. Like one, they drug her out of the office. She was a judge. And then they disbarred her and she can never, it was in Pennsylvania. Um, so it was crazy. But, but so don't be promising your seller. You go 99.9% .9 of the time you're gonna get the earnest money. And I say, my partner Brent Gove and I have done this for 25 years, and Brent and I, and Brent and or I, or Brent has been a part of over 4,000 transactions, and we have never lost an earnest money deposit for a client. Now, one time we had a client who said, "Keep the earnest money deposit. I want this house." Um, like, right? Mm -hmm. I, I backed out of something I was doing, a commercial building. And I, I was okay if they kept my deposit. Now they sent it back to me and I was within my rights, but I felt bad as a buyer. I did go a few weeks, uh, maybe two, three weeks, and I ended up backing out of the deal. And if they kept my $20,000 deposit, great. If not, great. And then I felt bad for Barry, and I took care of Barry and made him whole. And I'll were, not do your transactions any day of the week. <laughs> what? What? I said, I'll not do your transactions any day of the week. <laughs> you will do them, right? No, no. if you, if you cancel them, I'll still do them. <laughs> <laughs> worked out great. I paid this commission to them anyway. So. <laughs> Anyways, I felt bad. Okay, so again, um, oh, here's one. I saw a lot of the offers. They checked that box, buyer waives the home warranty. Yeah. And I, I, the offer was a great offer. I go, here's why this is a really dangerous offer for you. Well, the seller doesn't have to pay for the home warranty. I go, if something breaks on this house and there's no home warranty to cover it, who's it going to look to? Yeah. This is actually a really stupid thing for the agent to put, and there's no coverage. 
And if there's, if there's coverage, if there's a warranty on the automobile and it's a $5,000 repair, they go to the warranty and if they don't want it, they get mad at the warranty. But if there is no warranty, they go back to the seller. So the, the, the buyer's agent thinks they're smart. Buyer waives the home warranty. That is crazy. Yeah. And so I want there to be a home warranty. I want the seller to pay for it. I go, you actually want to pay for this. This is called a one year don't sue me thing. Right. <clears throat> Again, something for buyers. If you're representing a buyer, this yeah. home comes with a three year home warranty. They're, but they're, it's the seller, their seller's not offering anything. I'm willing to pay for three years. Mm. Right? What's that? Four fifty a year times three, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars. I can offer what sets me apart from from Barry Mathis is you buy a home for me. Every home I sell is covered for three years. That's why you want to work with me. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. And then you pay for another two years. So you know you can do that. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. uh, or you can buy from another Remax or Cobalt Banker agent. I'm telling you, ninety nine. Uh, is this That's a true idea. statement? 99.9% of all home sales, if they have a home warranty, it's one year. True or false? Yeah, true. How often, listen to me, how often is there a two year coverage on a home sold? How often? Never. Less than 1% of the time, never. So, what if your value proposition, what makes you different from a Sotheby's agent, what makes you different from all the other agents in San Diego, all the other agents in Chicago or Roseville or Sacramento, you buy a home through me and you get three years of coverage on this home. And then pull out the warranty. Pull it out and hand it to them. Here's the home warranty, right? And, and here's the things they're covering. Now this fine print, it doesn't cover everything, okay? But here it is. It's gonna cover your air conditioner, your heater, your washer, your dryer, your electrical, plumbing. And it explains the degree of how it covers electrical and plumbing. Your ovens, your microwaves, boom, boom, boom. And everyone else, if stuff goes wrong, your AC goes out in a year and a half, two years, it could be a $5,000 repair, an $8,000 repair. Um, but through me, you're covered for 36 months. That's why you want to buy with me. Is that a good one? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Value. What could you do different? Mm -hmm. and, and through me, I send all of my clients to a fun weekend in Edgewood when it's all over, just as a thank you. On me, my tree, or the Hyatt Regency in Incline Village. Or I send them over to Big Bear. Or my clients go out to Palm Springs. You mentioned you love the JW Marriott. Uh, Desert Ridge, or actually it's Scottsdale, the one in Palm Springs, I forget, the Oasis or whatever. I'll send you there, all my clients get this. You buy it through me, I, I give you the home, you get a fun weekend, I cover this. And then I also provide two hours of a licensed general contractor to make any handyman repairs you want, if you buy it through me. And then I also give you my house cleaning service. I have four housekeepers, and they will scrub your house from top to bottom. You know what that costs? 150 bucks. And you, you're boom, 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 boom. Would you do that for everybody? No, just people over a million dollars. Well, I, I don't have that market yet. Why don't you? Because you don't offer any of the services I just said. If What if you offered a value proposition that differentiated you from all the other agents that I do this, I do this, and I have an interior designer who will come over and show you how to stage the home and how to do this and show you where to buy furniture at a great price. and and. And I have my pool guy will come over and clean your pool for the first time. Of course, you tell him I want a deal because I'm getting your foot in the door if you get to have the pool job, right? Mm -hmm. And you can keep adding value. My gardener will come over if you buy through me, and they're going to do all This is what I do for my clients. Have any of those, I know you said you were talking to a Century 21 agent. I know you're talking to an independent agent. Have they listed what they do? Well, no. I said, don't tell them what I do, but ask them what they do. And they're going to say, well, we get an escrow. And I give you a bottle of wine at close, and you get the keys, and we do a <laughs> selfie, and you know. I, 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 I mean, if you want that. But I networked with the top agents in Sacramento. I will yeah. find what you want. I want to represent you so bad I can taste it. I'll give my right arm to represent you. No one will, I will turn over every leaf, every rock. I will find you the house. And you gotta somehow, listen to me, it's not the script, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Yeah, it is the good. conviction, yeah. it is the tonality. 90% yeah. of all communication is non-verbal. It is my hands moving, it is my face, it's the smile on my face. I'm not, look, I don't wanna represent you, so you scared me, man. <laughs> and right now I'm over-dramatizing some things. Smile, right now, everybody, Joey, smile with me. Do you feel better? Do you feel better right now? You, sometimes, I listen too, we're all intense, but when you smile, ready, everyone smile, try to be in a bad mood. Just try it, try it. 
Try to be in a bad mood. You want to be, you want to have some more endorphins, you want to be in a better mood, start smiling. Make a conscious effort. I'm on Zooms all day long. I just go. <laughs> oh, my face is. I want to tell the people. <laughs> we could sponsor them. We could get the listings. <laughs> Smile! Fantasy Island taught us this for those of you that are old. Yeah. yeah. Tattoo! Yeah, old. Yeah, Ricky Montalban, what was his name? Ricky? Ricardo Montalban. Ricardo Montalban. What did he say? Smile, the you're on Fantasy Island. Island. Close. <laughs> that might have been one of them. He said, Smiles, everyone! Smiles, everyone! Oh, yeah. We want our guests to have a euphoric. Hey, how are you? You go to a high end resort, they're smiling at you. So what I, why? They're trained to do it. What, what does Nordstrom do? They smile. Can I help you? Do you need anything? You good? Okay. They leave you alone. They're like, well, come on. You gotta want something. Let me take you around. Say, hey, give me some space. Right? They offer their help. If you need me, I'm over here. And they walk up and do my open house the same way. Smiles, everyone. You need to make a conscious effort to smile. Keep a mirror by your thing. Oh yeah. Look in the zooms. Smile. And when you smile, again, smile. How do you feel? I just feel better. You feel better? Yes. If you're, even if you're feeling crummy, just start smiling. This is stupid. You feel better. <laughs> you just, it, it, do you matter. know that it takes eight facial muscles oh. to smile and about 70 to frown? There are a ton of muscles in your face. And if you frown, it's exhausting. And people walk around with frowns all the time. So just smile. Everybody loves me. I realize not everyone loves me. But, but guess what? <laughs> I live in my own delusional world. Everybody loves me. I love everybody. And there are people who don't, but if they don't love me, that's on them because that's my job to love them. And it's your job to love people. It's your job to respond well. So, don't ever check the box, buy or waive the home warranty. Because if you get a savvy agent who's like, and I'm really, I want to get rid of that offer. And I use that. I go, if there's no home warranty, they're going to possibly sue you. Is that a good thing? No. I go, let's take this off of here. I didn't want to deal with that agent. Done. Done. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should put buyer will pay for the home warranty and say, yeah. this is my exactly. treat to you. I got exactly. it. The seller probably does not want to pay for this in this market. Right, right. But I want you exactly. to be covered for a year. In fact, I'm going to do three years. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's over half a million, two years. Over a million, three years. Over two million, five years. What's a commission on a two and a half percent on a two million plus home? Anybody? It's over $50,000. Come on, you guys. Yeah. Two and a half percent of a million is 25,000. 3% of a million is 30. Right? <laughs> you need to do this. I'm the one like, thing I learned about real estate agent. The one thing I learned, it looks like a ski boot. The one thing I've learned about a real estate agent, listen to me, is they may not be good at math, but they can calculate 3% of any number. <laughs> and lately, sadly, it's 2.5% of any number. And so, uh, if a million is 25 grand, 2 million plus is 50,000 or more. What's it cost for a five-year home warranty? Well, at four fifty a pop, it's well, let's just call it. Um, oh, 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 let's just say it's five hundred bucks. Twenty five hundred dollars. Wow. What's your commission? Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. How many of you would pay twenty five hundred to lock in a client and earn fifty thousand? Who would pay twenty five hundred for fifty thousand? Yeah. Think about it. I know you can buy through Christie's or Sotheby's or that couple bank agent. You, what makes me different is I provide a five-year mm -hmm. warranty on this home for five years. Don't, don't, at, just ask them, please don't tell them what I'm doing. This is my secret sauce. I provide a general contractor for eight hours. You call your general contractor, what's that cost? Oh, he bills out at 140 bucks an hour. Chimes eight, that's, uh, you know, 1200 bucks. Okay, let's add that to the 20, now you 3,700. The housekeeper, it's a bigger home, 200. It might be like $4,000 worth of things. I provide a housekeeper for hours for them to scrub this thing top to bottom. They'll get the flies out of the thing here. They wash the windows inside. It will be a sparkling, shiny. This is what I do for my clients. My gardener will come over here and trick out your fire blades, mow it, and make it perfect and hand it to you. And you'll be able to bring your family, your friends. The lawn's going to be perfect to edge. It's going to be amazing. What's that cost you? Four or 500 bucks. Maybe you spend $5,000, but if you have a high-end client, mm -hmm. you could just do nothing and go, go well, there's not much there. Sotheby's, EXP, Cobble Baker, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. Differentiate yourself. You can have a certain schedule. You don't tell the ones at 500, 
this is nothing compared to what I do for someone at $2 million, right? Are you guys with me? How many of you, when you bought your home, anybody ever bought a home yet? All of us, right? Yeah. How many did your agent provide you hours of a handyman service or a licensed general contractor doing no. any repairs? Or Nobody ever did that for us. Who said their house cleaners, Had four of them, Abby and the three, uh, three of her girlfriends, I call them the four cleaning tornadoes. I make, I make my fun with it. I'm gonna send four tornadoes. They will polish and shine your house. They'll come over there for, I make it perfect. Um, I'm, my gardener's gonna come over. My pool guy's gonna give you a once over and check out the pool and do all that for you and clean it for you, no charge. And, and we're gonna give you a five year warranty and see you don't have to worry about for years and years and years. This is what makes me different. And, and what, what have those other agents told you? Nothing like that. You bought and sold homes before you. Has anyone ever done that for you? No, never. I go, this is why you want to work with me. And then I network with the top. Er, am I demonstrating my value? Oh, yeah. 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 Not just telling them. But again, some of you are so worried about the script and what to say. All that is, it, the, the stuff you can let 500,000 more, I do this, a million more, I do this, two million more, I do this. You don't show them, okay, you're here, so you right. don't get that. You yeah, need exactly. to have separate marketing for you here, right? And, and, and then ask them, please don't give this to my competition. But if this is a value I do for you if you buy through me. Are we allowed to have our housekeepers go clean their house? Yes. Are we allowed to have a general can't charge and make repairs for them? Yes. Are we allowed to pay for that? Yeah. Yes. Are we allowed to increase the home warranty thing is big? Yeah. You know? And so there's some neat ways you can provide value. Um, another thing, the final thing I'll say about the offers was I saw some that did seller pay, seller pay. Seller buyer, seller buyer, 50-50. If it's a multiple offers, right. you're, you're talking about three or four thousand dollars worth of closing costs, maybe five grand. It should be buyer, 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 buyer all the way down. That's what I always do. Do you know how many did that out of 22? Not a single right. one. Yeah. The fastest close we had was actually 15 days, and that was the one who it wasn't even signed or initial, all cash, but they had no appraisal contingency check. There were a few that had no appraisal contingency check, but they had no money. I go, I don't believe that they're going to be able to pay the difference. With this all cash, there is no loan, therefore nobody's going to order an appraisal. They love the home. Go, you're, you, you, you were, we actually took 15000 less than the best offer. This 90000 look at this, it's an FHA loan. They have no money. Right, exactly. it's, it, I, I, there's no right. way, I mean, I guess it could appraise, uh -huh. but you can roll that dice. But, and then that other one, they had no, this was great, they had no appraisal contingency, and then at the bottom they put, Buyer will pay five thousand over the appraised value. Oh. So that means if it appraised at three fifty, get three fifty five. No, they're offering you three eighty five. You just yeah. lost thirty thousand. Exactly. This cash offer at three seventy five, which was fifteen thousand less than one offer, ten thousand less than another. We had one at three eighty five thousand. It beat them out because it was you, real. Yeah, and if it had been conventional, and so there's different ways that a listing agent is going to weigh the offers. But is this good stuff? Yes. yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is. I, I, I may have over prepared here a little bit, so I'm going to wrap it up with this. Next week, I'm going to teach you how to get a signed listing agreement every time you go. Now, some of you have heard this before, but it's good to bone okay. up on it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to list my home till the spring, till the summer, till next fall. And you're like, okay, I'll call you in June, I'll call you in July, I'll call you in September. Huge mistake. So next week, I'm going to, ooh, next week I'll be at Tony Robbins. The week after next week, <laughs> two can weeks you, from today. Can you, in a nutshell, for two minutes, because we got somebody going up tonight who they want to listen to, just, or maybe after. Just, <laughs> All right, I'll take it right now. I'll take it right sure? now. Yeah, so uh, sure? say, Krista, be my, it's, it's, it is February, right? Today is the 25th. Yep. yep. And you're my seller. You don't want to list till July 1st. Right. We don't want to get, we, yeah. the kids are getting out of school in May, yeah. June. Mm -hmm. We'll put on the market in July. We want to make repairs, mm -hmm. like yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. So, Tell me to call you back in the uh, beginning of June. Yeah, I got so much to do. Can you just no, stay in touch? Call me in June. Okay. And, and we'll go awesome. That. I'll totally do that. Now, just one thing I want to run by you, a possibility here. We've determined that the your home is selling on a low side at like 600000 There are some comps at six. I got seven comps at six fifty. So six fifty is probably a better. And then I got one at six seventy five and one at seven. The one at seven had a pool, waterfalls, three car garage. It was a shiny penny. So we could agree based upon the data that your home it would be seven hundred thousand would be pretty much a miracle offer, right? Yeah. And you and your husband Don Krista have made it clear that you actually want to list at seven hundred in July when you come out, correct? Right. 
Right. So here's what I'm going to recommend we do now. We occasionally get buyers from the Bay Area. If, so wherever you live, where do the buyers come with more money? We're in San Diego. Occasionally we get buyers from Newport Beach or La Jolla and Beverly Hills that move down into San Diego so they don't want to fight the traffic and they got big money. And a lot of times they're doing a 1031 and they have a limited timeline. And because the Americans' favorite pastime is mignana, they put things off to the last minute, they come to Sacramento, they come to San Diego, they come to Chicago, and they're in a big hurry. And they flew in, they can't be flying back and forth looking at property, and they need to buy a home like this weekend. And what happens, Krista and Dawn, is sometimes I've shown them everything on the market and they just hate everything on the market. So we have something we call a pocket listing, and that is your house. And so what I'm proposing we do is that we take a couple minutes today and do the paperwork and we list your home at $770,000. 70,000 more than the dream price, right? right? Now, what I will do is I might show this once between now and July 1st, maybe twice. It will not be marketed, nobody will know about it, but me, it's called a pocket listing. And so I take this listing and I put it in my pocket and I save it for a desperate all cash buyer. They're gonna pay cash, here are the rules. They have to pay 770, there is no negotiation. It must be as is, and that you were gonna spend, replaster your pool for seven grand, you won't have to do that. You were gonna redo the, uh, the deck, and your husband can do that with his brother, he thinks they could get the deck redone for about 18 grand, you don't have to do that. You were gonna repaint the outside of the house for $7,000, you don't have to do that. So it's probably gonna save you about $40,000 in repairs you're gonna make between now and July, they're gonna pay 770 because with someone who lives in San Francisco or San Jose or um, Newport Beach or La Jolla, can you buy a home for 770? No. Right? Um, and no, I can't. Like Orlando, the people move here from West Palm Beach. West Palm Beach is very pricey. What can you get for 770? A little condo. Mm -hmm. What can you get in Orlando for 770? You know, so you get you see how you do this? Yeah. And I said, so what I would like to do is take two minutes, do the paperwork at 770. I will not market this home. There will not be a for sale sign in the yard. And what I'm gonna do is wanna get the right buyer who's desperate. How would you and Dawn like to sell your home to a desperate all cash buyer who thinks, you know, I, I'm just telling you, you can go to Idaho or Utah and see um, Darcy Stratton, she might be watching right now. She's buying 20 acres on a river, 20 acres on a river in Montana, her dream property for $350,000. Can you get 20 acres on a river, right, in California? Or no, you can't. And so her, from California, she's going, I'll take it. Doesn't even negotiate. People in Montana's like, who would pay 350 for 20 acres <laughs> on La Ran on the Madison River? What a stupid idiot. Someone from California, yeah. someone from Newport Beach, right. someone from San Francisco. <laughs> 770 is like, I, I'm going to Puerto Rico. The homes, the homes are selling for 1.2. I want the home I'm in. I'll pay 200,000 more. Who will pay 1.4? The Puerto Ricans, who would pay that? Brentwood, because I wanna live in that home, and I think 1.4 million to live on the ocean and wake up every morning, I'll pay an extra, that's worth 200,000 to me. Now, Puerto Rican wouldn't pay that, but Brent will. So same thing, you may go, who would pay 77? Someone desperate with cash, who's at the end of a 1031, or just needs to dump it, or loves your home will do it, and then so you get 70,000 more on the asking price, over your dream price, and 40,000 repairs you don't have to make. That's a $110,000 variance. And typically these people, will I may sell it in two or three months, and I know you're not ready to move till September, that's why you're waiting till July 1st. I'm gonna set up a rent back till September, rent free. And either I deliver or I don't, I might show it once or twice, but if I gave you that kind of a buyer where you could actually get an extra $110,000, Close that store, get proceed, all your money in your pocket the next two or three months, and not move out till September and stay the rest of summer. Because are you going to make the mortgage payment between now and July? Yeah. What's your mortgage payment? Twenty eight hundred a month. Okay. So we're if I sell it, you start saving twenty eight hundred a month because I'll set up rent free. I'm telling you, we get this stuff all the time. Debbie Salisbury, who's my closing manager, said BS. She's been around me. Do you guys know what happened to Debbie? Yeah. I listed her home, I set the rent back till June, I sold it back in October. She's living in the home now, she got all of her money in November, she used her down payment for the home she's buying in Tucson to retire, she did a big down payment, then all the upgrades, the granite and the cabinets. James, you bought a new house. Yep. What were the upgrade package for your house, do you remember, oh, all together? Yeah, it was over 100,000. And do you, did they just let you finance that, or did you have no, to put it you down? Had to come up with oh, that. you had to put it down. That's yeah. interesting. Okay. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> so, so, 
So guess what? I go, so let's take two minutes and list it for 770 right now. Now July 1st, we'll reevaluate. It could be 700 is the right price. It could be, I don't bring you this buyer, but I'm telling you, this happens all the time. And I want to keep it as a pocket listing. So what do you say? We just take two minutes, do the initial and sign, and, and they go, sure. I go, 770. Of course, the, the commission is the standard 6%. Keep in mind, you're making an extra 110,000, 6%. Initial here, like initial here, Boom. initial here. Don't even breathe. You're not reading the pages, so if they want me to, it's boilerplate. Everyone signs the yeah. same state of California, exactly. state of Texas. Everyone signs the same one. You can say, I don't like that, then I'm not listing your house. Nobody can. This is a standard. We can't get rid of it. Right. And so, and then uh, sign a day here, and they initial, initial sign a day. I do a listing, uh, I can sign it in 60 seconds. I've written offers on a, a front car, two minutes. Just, what do you want to offer? Boom, 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 done. And um, does that help a little bit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? Did I hit it, Drew? You did. Did I do good? Oh, Drew's like, good. tell me how that works. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, 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 I taught this to Jen Sanmo. She was losing <laughs> listing after listing after listing because she lived on there like a piece to be picked. Yeah, call us back. We're going to list in the summer. We're listing in the spring. We're going to list in the fall. And she called back. Oh, we listed with Coldwell. We listed with Remax. Oh, my husband's, my boss, his wife got a license and it would be politically incorrect not to list with her. I mean, after all, I work for the man. And she had a relative. We found out my niece has a license. We want to help our niece out. Our sweet love, we let our niece list the house. They just think it's a sign in the yard, right? And she lost so many listings and she came to me frustrated. So I gave her that technique. She got like the next 12 listings in a row and everything was at 6%. Because when you're talking to them about getting all this money, they don't negotiate the price. Yeah, I can't do that. You get 6%, yeah. right? Yeah. And then keep it as a pocket listing and try to bring, show it once or twice. So you're not going to manage that expectation. You're not going to show it 10 times. And if you happen to have 10 all cash, then show it. Then say like, I don't tell you once or twice about it. I don't show twice thinking about the third one. I got another one. And guess what? You're out there scrapping for them. Went way over. Hope this was helpful. Uh, yes. So yes. We, Thank you. Good, good, good. So we will do this again in two weeks. Uh, next, can we play a best of for people who do yeah, Tony and grab one from the yeah, past? Absolutely. We're going to play a best of next Thursday because I'm doing Tony Robbins for my birthday. I turned 55 on Tuesday. Yay! And, uh, so, yes. So for my birthday, I, I told my wife, I want to spend four days, and it's uh, the 4th, the 5th, the 6th, and the 7th, and it starts at, in Puerto Rico, I think it starts at 7 in the morning and goes until 7, 8, 9 at night. It's like 12, 14 hours a day, four days. It's my fourth time. Like, what are you not smart? Did you get it the first time? Nope, there's so much information. I did not memorize it all the first time. I hate to admit that. And so it is the best thing I could do to get my mind right to be successful and empower myself for 2021. I want to encourage all of you watching today, whatever you had going, March 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th, wipe it clean. We're doing it. Mm -hmm. yep. We're doing it. And yeah. get, it's virtual. You could do it. You had to, for 25 years, you had to fly to Florida, fly to Texas, fly to San Diego, oh, fly to LA, get hotels, Ubers, rental cars. It costs so much more. And now you just get a little virtual ticket you can attend it. And it's even good for a live one when we get back to live ones. Please set aside the fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh. It'll help your relationships. It'll help you in business. It'll help your health. Good. You know, the first one, I skipped the fourth day. You know why? It was an optional, free fourth day. You know what they were discovering? Health. I'm like, oh, I don't need that. I was way overweight. And then the second year I went, and it blew my mind what I learned about health. Like, you don't know what exercise to eat right. It was incredible. And I'm. I cannot wait. The fourth day will sh just, we we're talking Nobel Peace Prize. The top elite, like the world's number one people are going to be teaching at this. So please attend it. Sign up today. I don't work for Tony Robbins. I don't earn a dollar, but I believe it'll help you. Yes. It'll just help you. It's not Jesus. It's not that, but it's going to help you. <laughs> Do really well in business and in your relationships. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Hi.